is a HMV, his master's voice, 78 RPM shellac record. And this is poems read by Stephen Spender. That's far away. I think continually of those who were truly great, who from the womb remembered the soul's history through corridors of light, where the hours are suns, endless and singing, whose lovely ambition was that their lips, still touched with fire, should tell of the spirit clothed from head to foot in song, and who hoarded from the spring branches the desires falling across their bodies like blossoms. What is precious is never to forget the essential delight of the blood drawn from ageless springs, breaking through rocks in worlds before our earth. Never to deny its pleasure in the morning simple light, nor its grave evening demand for love. Never to allow gradually the traffic to smother with noise and fog, the flowering of the spirit. Near the snow, near the sun, in the highest fields, see how these names are fated by the waving grass and by the streamers of white cloud and whispers of wind in the listening sky. The names of those who in their lives fought for life, who wore at their hearts the fire's center. Born of the sun, they traveled a short while towards the sun and left the vivid air signed with their honor. More beautiful and soft than any moth with burring furred antennae feeling its huge path through dusk. The airliner with shut-off engines, glides over suburbs and the sleeves set trailing tall to point the wind. Gently, broadly, she falls, scarcely disturbing charted currents of air. Lulled by descent, the travelers across sea and across feminine land indulging its easy limbs in miles of softness, now let their eyes, trained by watching, penetrate through dusk the outskirts of this town, here where industry shows a fraying edge. Here they may see what is being done. Beyond the winking masthead light and the landing ground, they observe the outposts of work, chimneys like lank black fingers, or figures frightening and mad and squat buildings with their strange air behind trees like women's faces shattered by grief. Here where few houses moan with faint light behind their blinds, they remark the unhomely sense of complaint like a dog shut out and shivering at the foreign moon. In the last sweep of love, they pass over fields behind the aerodrome, where boys play all day hacking dead grass, whose cries like wild birds settle upon the nearest roofs, but soon are hid under the loud city. Then, as they land, they hear the tolling bell reaching across the landscape of hysteria to where, larger than all the charcoal batteries and image towers against that dying sky, religion stands, the church blocking the sun. That was nice, wasn't it? So I'll just turn it over. Right, so uh, this is side two. Uh, Stephen Spender reads his poems. It's uh, HMV C3987.
silence were blown. When pavements were blown up, exposing nerves, and the gas mains burned blue and gold, and stucco houses were smashed to a cloud, pungent with mice, dust, garlic, anxiety. When the reverberant emptied facades of the palaces of commerce, isolated in the vacuum of silence, suddenly cracked and roared and fell, and the seven-maned golden lions licked the stony fragments, then the only voice through deserted streets was the Cassandra bell which rang and rang and ran as if released at last by time towards those fires that burst through many walls. Prophetic doom opened to the nostrils, blood and fire streaming from the stones. The city burned with unsentimental dignity of resigned wisdom those stores and churches, which had glittered emptily in gold and silk, stood near the crowning dome of the cathedral, like courtiers round the royal martyr. August shadows of night and bursting days of concentrated light dropped from the skies to paint a final scene, illuminated agony of frowning stone. Who can wonder then that every word in burning London seemed out of a play? On the stage there were heroes, maidens, fools, victims, a chorus. The heroes were brave, the rescued appeared passively beautiful, the fools spat jokes into the skull of death, the victims waited with the humble patience of animals trapped behind a wall, for the pickaxes to break with sun and water. The chorus assisted, bringing cups of tea, praising the heroes, discussing the habits of the wicked, underlining the moral, explaining doom and truth. I stood on a rooftop and they wove their cage, their murmuring, throbbing cage, in the air of blue crystal. I saw them gleam above the town like diamond boats conjoining invisible struts of wire, carrying through the sky their squadron's cage, woven by instincts delicate as a shoal of flashing fish. They went. They left a silence in our streets below, which boys gone to school will leave in their playground. A silence of asphalt, of privet hedge, of staring wall. In the blue emptied sky, their diamonds had scratched long curving, finest, whitest lines. These the days soon melted into satin ribbons, falling over heaven's terraces near the sun. Oh, that April morning they carried my will, exalted, expanding, singing in their aerial cage. They carried my will, they dropped it on a German town. My will exploded, tall buildings fell down. Then when the ribbons faded and the sky forgot, and April was concerned with building nests and being hot, I began to remember the lost names and faces. Now I tie the ribbons torn down from those terraces around the most hidden image in my lines and my life, which never paid the price of their wounds, turns thoughts over and over like a propeller, assumes their guilt, honors, repents, prays for them. In the burned city, I see the almond flower, as though with great cathedral fall, barbarian rage set free, the angel of a fresco from a cloister wall. This flesh petal tree, angel of Fra Angelico, with folded hands, bended knee, and arc of eloquent wing, see the plumes like tongues grow promising the rainbow to our world of ash will bring 
Annunciation of Spring. That was nice, wasn't it? Uh, what a lovely, soothing voice Stephen, uh, Stephen Spender had. I really enjoy his poems. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.